Welcome to this video tutorial on creating a perspective section drawing in Rhino 7. For this tutorial I'm going to be using this simple model of a room here and we're going to start by setting up a sectional view of this particular model. Now to cut a section of any model in Rhino we're going to be using clipping planes and we're just going to type in clipping plane into the command bar till it pops up like so and we're going to just draw this out as a rectangle on our scene. Now once we've drawn that you'll see that it immediately starts to cut our model up in section and currently that's doing it in plan view sort of as a horizontal section. Now if we want to rotate this to be a sort of vertical section on the model I can just use the gumball here this sort of blue red and green arrow options here which can be found if you click on the gumball option down at the bottom. We can hold on the red axis here in our x-axis hold shift on our keyboard and rotate that 90 degrees to lock us in this kind of vertical section here and we're just going to move that section into a position that sort of looks good in the model that's somewhere that exposes some of the structure on this chair and also kind of cuts halfway through our roof structure like so and once we're happy with that we're then going to set up the view that we want to take our section through now currently we're in perspective view but i want my section to be kind of flat to the model but still give some sense of perspective within that sectional view. Now to do that we're just going to go back to our four windows and I'm going to be using the front view here to take my section. For you it might be the right hand side or the back of the model and if you need to pick a new view you can always click on the drop down, go to set view and choose a view from there as well. But for mine I'm going to be using this front view for the model. Now you'll see currently that my perspective view is being cut by my clipping plane like so but my front view currently isn't being cut. It sort of it still looks the same as it was before it was being chopped by the clipping plane. Now, in order to make sure that this front view is also being affected by our clipping plane, we need to just select the clipping plane, go into the properties menu, and up here we can tick on the views clipped by that plane. And currently it's only on the perspective view. So if I click on front, it will also chop the front view as so and you can see there's a kind of dark line showing where the model is being clipped there so now we know that that's now turned on in that front view and you can always kind of move it around in that view to kind of tailor it to best suit the view that we're looking at i think about there's right so now we've got that view clipped we're now going to open up that view a bit larger and we're going to start to work into this now currently our view is set up as a sort of parallel projection which means it's perfectly flat to the section we've got no perspective on here and this would be good for sort of standard sectional drawings or elevation drawings but for the purpose of this video we want to actually add some perspective to this to give some depth to our section and in order to do this we need to change the camera projection on this view to allow it to show the perspective of this model now to do this we need to make sure that nothing in our scene is selected and we're going to go to the properties panel and under projection we're going to switch this from parallel over to perspective like so and once you do that you'll see that perspective has now been added to that view now the important thing when you've added this on is to not rotate around your model because the camera will currently be flat to that section line which will mean that we will still get our kind of section nice and flat to the camera but the model will give us perspective and you can always check this by just flicking back from perspective to parallel projection and it should still be flat and that will tell you if your view is still nice and flat to the camera now if accidentally you're on your perspective view and you accidentally rotate off the model and currently my section isn't flat anymore it's slightly an angle there's a quick way we can reorient this to the camera and that option can be found under view, set camera and orient camera to surface. And we can use this option to align our camera to a particular surface in the model. So if I select that and we click on this back wall here and we just pick a point on that back wall, you may sometimes need to flip the camera if it flips around the wrong side of the model, but this should work correctly. And we'll click on the surface like so and you'll see that our camera is now flat to the model. Now obviously as I just said this has kind of flipped us to the back of the model so sometimes when you need to do this we'll then need to just set it again go back to the set camera options orient camera to surface pick the surface and hit that flip option there and pick on the model and there we've got our camera back in and from this point instead of kind of rotating around the model I'm just going to use this zoom dynamic tool here 
should just pull us back slightly from that surface and align it with the pan tool. So just use a mixture of the pan and the zoom tool to make sure we're not accidentally rotating. Now with this, you can always play around with the camera lens length if you want to get kind of more perspective in this view. The lower we do that angle, the more perspective we'll get, and we can always then sort of zoom back in to give us a more extreme angle. And I think somewhere around a 30 is usually good for this kind of view. Now, once you're happy with a particular sort of angle you've set yourself, always really important just to save that out as a named view. And to do that, we're just gonna go to view, set view, named views, and then usually kind of dock it on the side here and then click on the save option. And we'll call this perspective section. Like so, and that's saved. And now we don't have to worry about rotating off the view or moving the camera because we can always double click to get our section back again. Now, once we've got this saved, we're now gonna to start to convert this into a drawing. So to do this, I'm just gonna select the whole model here and we're gonna use Make 2D to convert this into a 2D drawing. Um, before I do my Make 2D, it's always good to make sure you've been modeling in your layers and you've got a different layer for each of the main components of the model. The reason for this is when we add line weights to this drawing, we're gonna do this per the kind of piece of the model that we have here. So the line weight for the frame might be smaller than the line weight for the shelves, etc. So always good to make sure that you're using layers when you're modeling because it allows us to line weight a lot easier when we turn it into a drawing. So we're gonna select our model and we're gonna type in make 2D to create it into a 2D drawing there. A couple of options just to make sure we're using in our make 2D. One is to make sure it's from the correct view. So we're in our perspective section, which is correct. The other is to maintain the source layers, which will make sure that when we do our Make 2D, it will keep all of the layers I have set up here and keep the lines on those layers for us. So we'll have sort of different layers for each of our kind of types of our model in there as well. Um, another one is to have this clipping plane intersection, which will essentially give us a section line for where the model is being cut, which is quite useful. I usually keep on viewport rectangle, which is a kind of rectangle of the view, which might allow us to easily align a kind of rendered version of this over the top again. And a group output is quite good just to kind of keep everything grouped together. And once we're done, we're just gonna hit okay to do a make 2D. And depending on the size of your model, that might take a longer or shorter amount of time. So once that's done, we can go back and we're gonna find it in the top view of our model. And we'll just move it out of the way here. And there we have our kind of nice perspective section, 2D view of our model there. Now, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna work this up in Illustrator into our kind of finished line drawing. So what we'll do is we're just gonna select that view out. We're gonna to go to File, Export Selected. We're gonna save this model as an Illustrator file here. And once we hit save, we're gonna actually preserve the model scale and we're gonna set it to a kind of scale that we want to use in our view. So perhaps a one to 100 scale might be good. And because the section itself will still be in scale, obviously the perspective parts will be in perspective. So we won't be able to keep those to scale, but we can keep that section line to scale. So to do a one to 100, we could do a one millimeter in the model on the left-hand side equals a 0.01 millimeter in the kind of output drawing, that's one to 100 because we're dividing the number on the left by 100 to give us a number on the right. And then we hit OK to save that out. And that's now saved it as an Illustrator file. So what we'll do now is we're gonna open up Illustrator and start to work up some line weights into this drawing. Now we've opened our drawing up in Illustrator, you usually could find this slightly located off the artboard. It might be in a random location when you bring it in because it will be dependent on where it was in your Rhino file. Um, what we can start by doing is just select the drawing, move it over to our artboard there, and we're just gonna start by kind of resizing our Illustrator artboard to match the frame of our drawing. And to do that, I'm gonna go to Document Setup, Edit Artboards, and we're just gonna scroll down and snap that to the edges of the drawing like so until we've kind of resized it and once we've done that we can delete that frame around the drawing now what you'll find is when you bring this into your illustrator file 
all the line weights will be matching and they're usually around a one point stroke when you bring them in. But because we made sure we maintained our source layers when we did our Make 2D, we can now easily start to adjust those line weights to better match the kind of drawing we want to create. Now, if we open up this layers panel a bit wider so we can see it, you'll see we've got a lot of kind of clipping plane intersection lines. And these are actually going to be the section of our drawing. So what we can do is we can actually start by just making the whole drawing one line color. I'm just going to use black for this particular one. I'm going to delete that viewport rectangle layer because we've just deleted it from my drawing. And then I'm just going to lock all of those clipping plane intersection lines because those are going to be the section and I don't need to worry about those too much yet. We're going to keep those at a one point line weight for now. What I'm also going to do is I'm just going to delete this layer here because it's on the default layer and I think it's just a little bit of a leftover line from there. So we don't need that. And we're just going to start by giving a line weight to each of these other layers that are left over. Now I'm going to start with my frame, which is my kind of primary structure in this model. And I'm just going to select all of the lines on this layer by clicking on the little circle next to the layer here. And then we're going to go up to our stroke weight and I'm going to do these as a 0.25, which is a good kind of baseline weight to start with as a nice sort of slim line in your drawing. From there, we're going to go to the windows. I think these are going to be slightly lower line weights. So we're going to do this as a 0.1. We're going to do the board, which is the kind of sheathing board on this model. And we're going to do that as a 0.2, slightly lower than the frames. And in terms of kind of why I'm picking these numbers, I'm just thinking about the kind of hierarchy in the drawing and what line weight I want to give each of those pieces in relation to one another. So I want the frame to read slightly thicker than the kind of window frames and the boards in the drawing as well. So now we've kind of done all of those elements on that piece. I'm now going to kind of lock these and we're going to go and relook at our section line. And currently I think it's slightly too heavy in comparison to the rest of our drawing. So we're just going to unlock those section layers, just select all of those lines at once, and maybe let's put it down to a 0.75 or 0. maybe 65 here. And it's just a kind of case of reading it against the rest of the drawings to see if that's legible as the section. And I think that's kind of working quite well there as well. Now for a final touch on this, what I might do is just tidy up the section slightly because what you can see is happening is where we're cutting through these beams, we actually can see the inside of that shape. And then obviously in reality, these are kind of timber beam structures. We wouldn't be able to see inside the timber beam because it's not hollow. So in order to kind of fill that in, I'm just gonna make a new layer behind my section. We'll call this a kind of fill layer. And you can do this a few ways. The way I'm just gonna do this is just by creating a kind of white fill square and just going around and sort of filling in those pieces. What you can also do if you want to do the sort of proper annotation for a cut beam is you can put a little kind of cross in there. I usually try and keep it at quite a light line weight and I'm just going to use the line tool here to draw a kind of cross through that beam which indicates that that beam is being cut in that section. And then you can just copy those up in place into those kind of correct locations and that way we can really start to make this section come together as well. Now what you also might want to do to these sections is add a bit of colour or a bit of hatch in them to kind of give some materiality to some of the other pieces in this drawing. The way I'd usually do this is using the live paint tool which can be found under your shape builder tool here in live paint bucket. Now in order for live paint to work you need to actually kind of create a group out of all your lines to then allow you to fill them in and obviously at the moment mine are all on different layers so it's quite hard to group them together without losing that ability to change my line weights as per the layer. So what I'll do to make sure I can use that live paint tool is I'll just unlock all of my lines like so. We'll select them all together. We're going to go to the copy option we're going to lock them again and we're going to make a brand new layer at the very bottom of my layers panel here. We're going to call this paint and then we're going to paste those lines in that paint layer but we're going to go and edit and go paste in place to allow the pasting option to place it in exactly the same location back on that layer like so. So now we've kind of got all of our lines of our drawing but all on one layer. Now we can then select our live paint tool and we can create a live paint group out of all those lines at once like so and there you can see I can now paint in those sections of the drawing 
Um, what I'm also going to do with this live paint layer is just get rid of any line work on there so it's invisible. And actually if I hide all my layers but that paint layer, we won't be able to see anything. There's still an object there and you can see that by using the live paint bucket and filling it in, but it's got no line work to it. And the reason for that is we're just purely going to use this layer to add in fill color and hatches to our drawing. And we're going to use all the other layers above it to control the line weights. So we're essentially separating our paint layer and our line weight layer from one another. Now, if you wanted to say add a hatch to some of these pieces, we can find hatches up in the kind of swatches panel in the top left here under this swatch library and under patterns and basic graphics there's a few different hatches which are quite useful for these um, i find kind of the lines quite useful if you wanted to just add a kind of hatch at the back and we could select this simple line hatch and start to add kind of hatches to the back here of the model now these might be that the line weight's too thick or the hatch is too strong there so we can always change those in objects transform and we can kind of scale that hatch by just clicking transform patterns here and I could put this on a 30% for example if we look at the preview we can have a little look and see what that looks like and there you can see that hatch is now a lot smaller in the back of that model there and we can add that across all parts of the model if we wanted to as well and you can always kind of lower the opacity of that layer if you wanted it to appear or read a little bit lighter in the scene so that was just a quick tutorial on how to create a perspective sectional drawing in Rhino 7 and work up the line weights and textures in Illustrator. I hope you found this video tutorial useful and if you want to watch any other videos on creating drawings or imagery in V-Ray or Rhino then please watch the videos on the channel. Thanks for watching.